YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Our solar system has four gas giants, right? Okay, but if by gas giant you mean a large radius, low density planet composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, then no. To explain, first some similarities and differences. Surprisingly, all four of our giant planets have a banded appearance. Jupiter's bands obviously are the most visually striking. Those on Saturn and Neptune are visible but somewhat muted, whereas Uranus only shows us its stripes in the infrared. Stripes are divided into zones, light-coloured regions of rising gas, and belts, more colourful dark regions of sinking gas. They rotate in an opposite direction to one another and are bounded by 100 meter per second winds called jets. And that's another thing all giant planets have in common, extreme weather. Without land masses to slow them down, winds on our giant planets can blow several times faster than winds here on Earth. The record goes to Neptune with its supersonic 2000 km per hour winds. And crazy winds spawn crazy storms. Jupiter's great red spot immediately springs to mind, but it's not the only giant to have such storms. Yeah, it's obviously the most impressive, it's three times the size of Earth and has been raging for at least 350 years now. But Neptune had a great dark spot, it just didn't hang around so long. And every 30 years or so Saturn, like an acne ridden teenager, breaks out in its own spots. And like most teenagers, Saturn likes to be individual with its polar hexagon. Unique to Saturn, this persisting cloud pattern is poorly understood, but thought to be the product of a standing wave. Scientists have been able to recreate this hexagonal pattern under lab conditions, alongside other 2 to 8 sided shapes. Could there be planets out there featuring such shapes? We don't know, but it's definitely an intriguing possibility. Rings are another thing that the giant planets have in common. Being large and made of icy material, Saturn's rings are easily visible and have been known to us since Galileo's discovery of them in 1610. He did think they were Saturn's ears and that Saturn periodically would devour them, but hey, no one's perfect. We didn't discover the other planets' rings until much later because they are much thinner, composed of dark, dusty material, and so are very hard to spot. All our giants hoard moons like it's nobody's business. Between them they have about 170 moons, depending of course on how you define moon. And of these 170, 17 are so large that if they weren't satellites, they'd be dwarf planets. I mean, look at Ganymede and Titan, both are moons, but both are 10% larger than Mercury. So bands, rings, moons and crazy weather are all common giant planet features. You can add large magnetic field to that list but therein lies the first of many differences. Jupiter's magnetic field is about 14 times stronger than that of Earth's and is so large that it envelops four of its largest moons, protecting them from the solar wind. This same lunar shielding also occurs on Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Auroras on Jupiter produce about 10 to the 14 watts of auroral power. That's 10,000 times more powerful than Earth's aurora. Just like Jupiter's great red spot, its auroras seem to be permanent features, unlike the other gas giants whose auroras are transient, like Earth's. But the most glaring difference here is that Jupiter and Saturn's magnetic fields are quite regular in nature. Uranus and Neptune's on the other hand are not. Theirs do not originate from their geometric centres and are sharply inclined to their axis of rotation. Why? Internal structure. Planets like Jupiter and Saturn contain, by mass, about 90% hydrogen, with their thick hydrogen and helium envelope extending all the way down to their relatively small rocky silicate cores. Gravity crushes this hydrogen and causes it to transition from a gaseous state through a liquid molecular state into a final ionized liquid metallic state. Intense gravity here forces hydrogen into acting like a superconducting metal. As a result, Jupiter and Saturn's internal silvery metallic ocean can carry an electrical charge and is thought to give rise to their magnetic fields. Surrounding this metallic hydrogen layer is a region dominated by helium and neon rain, which is cool, but will pale into insignificance once we look at the internal structure of Uranus and Neptune. Uranus and Neptune too are thought to have rocky silica cores, but unlike Jupiter and Saturn, hydrogen only accounts for about 20% of their mass. The bulk of their mass is in the thick mantle of water, ammonia and methane, in both liquid and ice form. Lacking the gravity needed to produce metallic hydrogen, convection currents in their slush puppy-esque mantle act as a dynamo and produce their magnetic fields. Their gravity is however great enough to perhaps break apart the molecules of methane, compress the free carbon atoms into diamonds and in theory produce internal diamond hailstorms, a liquid diamond ocean and maybe even diamond icebergs. Surrounding all of this is a final layer of gaseous hydrogen and helium. Small traces of methane here give them their bluish tint. 
Uranus and Neptune differ from Jupiter and Saturn in size, colour and internal structure. So I'd argue that our system does not have four gas giants, rather two gas giants and two ice giants. Or more precisely, two ice giants and two liquid giants. On the subject of clarity, you've probably heard that Saturn has a density less than that of water and thus would float in water, right? Eh, uh, no. The amount of water needed to make Saturn float will be roughly equivalent to an ocean about six Earth diameters deep. Near the seafloor, gravity's pressure will be great enough to crush the water into a solid state, making the physical construction of such an ocean impossible. And even if we could gather all that water and somehow keep it liquid, Saturn isn't solid. Its heavy silica core would sink and its puffy hydrogen outer layers would disperse. So if by floating you mean planetary annihilation, then yeah, Saturn would float. Worse still, if from Saturn's perspective we want this ocean to appear relatively flat, like the oceans on Earth do, the inferred size of this hypothetical ocean planet would be roughly equivalent to the Sun, and things that big undergo nuclear fusion in their core. Again, Saturn wouldn't float, just die, painfully. So, our solar system. Four terrestrial planets, two liquid giants and two ice giants, zero floaters. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.